Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Saya Risa Eftemita Rustam, Ketua Panitia 43 tahun diaktifkannya kembali Pasar Modal Indonesia. Mengucapkan selamat datang kepada Direksi Perusahaan Tercatat, seluruh tamu undangan dan peserta yang telah hadir di hari kedua rangkaian kegiatan Public Expose Live 2020. Di hari kedua ini akan ada 12 perusahaan tercatat yang akan memaparkan hal-hal yang terkini mengenai perusahaan mereka. Public Expose Live 2020 ini merupakan momen yang sangat tepat bagi para investor untuk mengetahui kondisi keuangan dan rencana perusahaan tercatat ke depannya. Semoga kemudahan mengakses informasi terkini oleh masyarakat luas mengenai kinerja perusahaan tercatat dapat semakin meningkatkan kepercayaan masyarakat terhadap investasi di pasar modal Indonesia yang pada akhirnya diharapkan dapat meningkatkan likuiditas pasar dan jumlah investor. Demikian kami sampaikan. Akhir kata, saya mengucapkan selamat mengikuti acara Public Expose Live 2020. Semoga dapat menjadi tambahan informasi untuk menentukan arah investasi Bapak Ibu para investor ke depannya. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The world needs energy, now, tomorrow, and in the years to come. Sustainability is key. We need to sustain both supply and use of energy. It is pivotal to acquire, secure, and manage resources for a country to grow. And it is here where we, Medco Energy, are making a living investing in the future of oil and gas, mining, and power generation. We are a large energy and natural resources group with strong multidisciplinary capabilities, and we are trusted to own and operate large and complex assets in three key business areas, oil and gas, power generation, and mining. Hailing from humble beginnings as a drilling contractor in 1980, we understand what sustainability means. Further sustaining growth, the acquisition of Ophir Energy PLC in 2019 has firmly established Midco Energy as a leading oil and gas player in Southeast Asia and beyond, with new assets in Madura, Thailand, Vietnam, Mexico, and Tanzania. The combined business has a greater scale in reserves and production and a wider geographic footprint for future opportunities, driven by technology, innovation, cost leadership, and HSE best practices. Medco Energy delivers integrated energy and natural resources solutions in mining and power generation alongside our core oil and gas exploration and production. We operate large volumes of oil and gas, as well as electricity, while ensuring close and excellent relations with our stakeholders. Throughout all of our operations, we uphold the highest international standards, 
for health, safety, and environmental management. And we employ the best talent while promoting and providing continuous education and innovation. At the Rimao PSC, we successfully mitigate natural production decline through the application of best operational practice and have received the Gold Proper Award, the highest recognition for environmental management and corporate social responsibility. At the Le Matang PSC, we handle extreme high temperature and high pressure well conditions through the utilization of sophisticated materials and technology. The South Sumatra block is one of the biggest gas contributors of our portfolio. It supplies power plants, a fertilizer factory, and also city gas across the region. Still, we constantly seek opportunities to increase our capabilities, operating world-class facilities seamlessly. Those facilities include the South Natuna Sea block, a sophisticated oil and gas production block that's comprised of world-class platforms and the most complex floating production storage and offloading vessel in the world, Mulana. With enhanced capabilities, we're now monetizing remarkable gas assets in Aceh province. Block A gas development is now producing and ready to fill our commitment. On this achievement, Medco Energy was the first company to develop new gas resources in the post-peace Aceh economy. Also, this is one of our key contributions to Indonesia. In Central we've developed and maintained the production of Sonoro gas fields at an optimum level. Moreover, we're entering the second phase development based on recent additional resource discoveries. The gas is delivered to Donggi Sonoro LNG plant, the first LNG development with an integration of downstream and upstream scheme. Located in the East Java Basin, the Madura Offshore PSC covers an area of 849 square kilometers and supplies gas to industries in East Java. While in Vietnam, the Block 12 WPSC is located in the Nam Chon Son Basin offshore and contains the Tim Sao and Dua producing fields. Furthermore, in Thailand, the Bua Luang oil field in the Gulf of Thailand has been on stream since 2008. In Oman, Medco has been particularly successful in revamping the Karim small fields. Our electricity business, Medco Power, a medium-sized independent power producer, is growing steadily while providing operations and maintenance services to large power plants. Investing for the future, we're aware that renewables are becoming more and more a critical component of the energy mix in the world. Therefore, together with our partners, we're developing clean energy production facilities, including the Sarula Geothermal Power Plants, the largest single contract geothermal power project in the world. The development is completed and Medco Power has become its operator Expanding our mining business portfolio, we have seamlessly integrated the Batu Hijau Gold and Copper Mine, a world-class operation. We will build a smelter for adding value in future production. Wherever we operate, we are committed to support community development through education, healthcare, economic empowerment and environmental protection. In terms of economic empowerment, we've been promoting organic farming, including the Shri Paddy variety. 
We also engage and support the development of education, including providing scholarships in remote areas. We also support communities to live cleaner, healthier, and more sustainable lives through programs like the natural pharmacies. As part of our commitment to community health care, we've built a regional general hospital in the province of Aceh. We are proud to improve well-being wherever we are. Medco Energy excels in key business segments both at home and abroad. We invest in the future in oil and gas, mining and power businesses, managing a solid platform of producing assets with excellent growth prospects, upholding professionalism, innovations and utmost care for our employees as well as the people around us. In other words, we aim to deliver value through great people, great assets, and excellent relationships with all of our stakeholders. We are Medco Energy. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang dan salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Terima kasih kami ucapkan atas kehadiran Bapak dan Ibu dalam acara Public Expos Live 2020 dalam rangka 43 tahun diaktifkannya kembali Pasar Modal Indonesia pada sesi Public Expos yang hari ini oleh PT Medco Energi Internasional TBK atau dikenal dengan kode perdagangan MEDC. Medco bergerak pada bidang usaha pertambangan minyak dan gas, sektor mining, dan subsektor crude petroleum and natural gas production, dan tercatat di bursa sejak tanggal 12 Oktober 1994. Perkenalkan, nama saya Ayuning Pratiwi, selaku moderator yang akan memandu acara pada siang hari ini. Bersama saya juga telah hadir manajemen dari PT Medco Energi Internasional TBK. Yang pertama, the first speaker, would be Mr. Anthony Robert Matias as the Director and Chief Financial Officer. Good afternoon, sir. Yang kedua dengan Bapak Ronald Selamat Gunawan. Selamat siang, Bu. Selamat siang, Pak. Saya lanjutkan yang kedua dengan Bapak Ronald Gunawan selaku Director and Chief Operating Officer. Selamat siang, Pak. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Dan yang ketiga dengan Ibu Mirta Sri Utami selaku VP Core Planning and Investor Relations. Selamat siang, Bu. Selamat siang, Bu. Baik Bapak Ibu hadirin, apabila selama pemaparan materi Bapak dan Ibu hadirin memiliki pertanyaan, Bapak dan Ibu dapat menyampaikan pertanyaan tersebut melalui menu Q&A yang tersedia pada interface Bapak Ibu. Pertanyaan tersebut selanjutnya akan kami bacakan pada sesi tanya jawab. Kami juga ingin menginformasikan kepada Bapak dan Ibu bahwa pada akhir acara nanti akan ada pengundian door prize. Bapak dan Ibu cukup mengisi kuesioner yang akan kami sediakan pada room chat di tengah sesi nanti. Untuk mempersingkat waktu, kami persilahkan kepada manajemen perseroan untuk memberikan kemaparan, dimulai dengan Bapak Antoni. Mr. Antoni Robert Matias, you may start the presentation, please, sir. Thank you, Bu. If you could take the first slide, please. I hope, uh, well, first of all, selamat siang, Bapak Ibu. Thank you for joining the expo today, and I hope you enjoyed our brief video introduction. I will open the presentation. I will present in English a few slides, uh, introduction to the company and recent financial performance. And then I will pass to my colleague, by Ronald, who will take you through some more recent operational statistics and summary of Medco. So first, next slide, please. So we should be on slide two. If you cannot hear me, please chat to the moderator and uh, we'll try to fix that. But here we go, slide two. Yeah, so back one slide. <laughs> here we go, thank you. If we can start here, this is a very good summary of Medco Energy. Medco at a glance. 
and I, we could probably do the whole presentation just from this slide because it covers uh, the, the whole range of our experience, our skills. First of all, the top slide, uh, you saw in the video that we purchased Ophir Energy PLC last year. It was uh, a purchase of a public company in the UK with mainly operations in Southeast Asia. And the first comment, slide one, is not our words. These are words taken from Wood McKenzie following our acquisition. And they refer to natural resources, of course, because we have oil and gas. You see they're on point two, oil and gas, which is the backbone of the company. But we also have power and we emphasize clean power. We do not operate coal and mining, and we emphasize we do not have coal, it's copper. So you will see a renewables theme in power. And also when we talk about copper, we see huge growth for copper in the future during this energy transition that the world is going, is, is, is moving rapidly towards with the expansion of electrification. And that expansion is particularly happening in Southeast Asia despite this new normal, as we call it, with COVID, Southeast Asia has the young, is the youngest continent. And that is the demographic in Southeast Asia has the youngest people and the most rapidly growing economies and hence growing demand for energy. So Metco Energy placed as we are in Indonesia at the center of Southeast Asia with operations in Vietnam and Thailand and with copper and power capabilities to fuel growth in the region. So we think we're well placed. But growth is not enough and position is not enough. You need to be functionally excellent. So we are a cost leader. We're, we're essentially, we operate in commodity markets and you make money by being, at least one element is being cheap. But you need to be an experienced operator, which we are. So you note that we operate most of our assets. We have uh, joint operations or we are the partner in some larger, operation, uh, larger operations we acquire from Ophir. But generally, we like to operate because we can control the cost, the capital, and we make and maintain a strong focus on environmental, social and governance aspects. One of our credit strengths is our home base in Indonesia here, where we have long-term take or pay protected gas contracts with blue chip customers. So clearly we supply PLN, PN, but in login, long-term fixed gas contracts, but we also export with index contracts to Semgas in Singapore and Petronas in Malaysia. And we have a track record and Paronald will take you through some recent projects that we've placed in service on budget or on time and been able to monetize a large resource base. So you can explore and find resource, but you need to be able to develop and bring it to market. The video showed you our recent acquisition of Ophir, and I will take you through some, uh, a little history of our portfolio management acquisitions, but also dispositions, portfolio rationalization. And all of this is done by an experienced board and management team with international experience. Both our, in, my Indonesian colleagues and myself have worked for a range of international companies before we moved to Metco. Next slide, please. Here, uh, a summary of what you saw in the video and what I've talked you through. Backbone of our business, oil and gas, with clean power, no coal, and copper mining. Oil and gas, we now produce over 100,000 barrels a, a day with uh, a bias towards gas, not oil, 60% gas. You see the reference to cost efficiency. We are below $10 a barrel. Four or five years ago, we were $15 a barrel and we have pushed this down uh, effectively, but also safely to below 10. 
We now have uh, certified resources of almost a billion barrels that we, so a resource is hydrocarbon that is discovered, but we don't have a plan to develop it yet. When you have a plan and you start to develop, it becomes a reserve. Hence, we need project management skills to execute our projects and bring those resources to market. Having said that, particularly in this new environment, we are not a high risk explorer. And I think you will see people like, especially BP most recently, and a little before that Chevron, many of the big companies are cutting back on their large scale exploration programs because of, again, they are looking forward to see this energy transition. We adopted this approach a number of years ago where we undertake low risk exploration in existing PSEs, which are cheaper to bring to market and closer to our infrastructure. Clean power. Indonesia, as you all know, a vast renewables resources. We need the right environment to develop those resources, but we are making strides towards green power. You see there we operate we call it, I guess I should call it clean rather than gas to be purely technical here, but we operate gas, solar, hydro, and geothermal assets. Again, cost efficiency is key, is key and also complementary skills about large scale project management to bring capital projects in on time. Finally, mining, and we emphasize copper mining, not coal, not coal. Again, we see an energy transition here and we are building for the future. We have uh, interest, you know, we don't operate, but we jointly operate Aman Mineral in uh, Aman Mineral Nusim Tengara in Sumbawa, east of Bali. It's a world-class copper with some gold producer. We have been developing phase seven, which is a large, fully funded, development, almost $1.4 billion development to expand and access the next level of productive ore. We reached the productive ore in around April and production is now expanding. And there you see at the bottom, a couple of points to close on this asset, the huge Elang property, undeveloped resource, one of the largest undeveloped copper resources in the world is on the is on the mine site and as copper grows as energy transition moves to greater electrification the demand for copper will only increase next slide please i will go quickly i recognize we're short of time so next slide please here a quick summary of how how we access capital no nope. <laughs> one slide too many one back, please. The slide, hopefully, to show you is about liquidity and access to funding. Funding via capital markets, our own generated cash flow, and also bank financing. As you'll see, we have grown, you will see in the next slide, we've grown quite rapidly. To do that, you need access to funding. Operating cash flow from long term gas and power contracts with take or pay support. We also in this environment hedge some production, at least 15% of our production every year, we will hedge to ensure um, access to funding in low price environments, such as where we are today. We're at 600 million margin, the rights issue in progress and warrants still there till the end of 2020, can raise up to 300 million US dollars. And then now we are the largest, in, we are the largest Indonesian private capital market bond issuer with international credit ratings from Fitch, S&P, Moody's and Perfindo, all of which were reaffirmed recently in mid-year after the recent price drop. And then finally, bank financing we have access to undrawn facilities and long-standing arrangements with multiple international banks. All of this gives us access to the funds we need to develop our projects and bring resources to market, and of course, to acquire new businesses. Next slide, please.
Here, a quick summary of our financial performance. Uh, a few things to take away. We're clearly in a, as I said, a commodity business, particularly oil and gas and copper and gold. Commodity prices rise, they fall, they run in cycles. You will see the revenue growth since 2015, revenue and EBIT out the commodity, i.e. prices go up, prices go down, but consistently the company has grown. It's grown by reducing costs, as I mentioned, $15 a barrel to below 10. It's grown by developing projects, acquiring new businesses, but with also a mind on all stakeholders. So our net debt to EBITDA, which is a measure of the productivity of, your, of the capital you have employed, has dropped from 6.8 to 2.8 times following the acquisition of, of Ophir. Here, a couple of comments on Ophir. Ophir had a London-based headquarters, uh, a, uh, a headquarters, a mini headquarters in Thailand as well. We, of course, have closed both of those headquarters and now run everything from Jakarta. That, together with other procurement and staffing synergies, has generated more than 50 million per year of accretive synergies that you will begin to see in our books from 2020 onwards. Closing the London office alone saved us $30 million. That office now is fully closed, of course. So there you see in the bottom right, the impact of the Ophir acquisition on pro forma EBITDA. In 2018 to 19, the growth of Ophir, despite paying the transaction costs. So an accretive acquisition at the right time. Next slide, please. Portfolio management. I'm often asked if in this price cycle and in COVID, this pandemic we're going through, if we are still acquisitive. And I would say that our criteria for acquisition has not changed. Whether prices are high or low, there are always opportunities. We'll assess those opportunities to ensure that they are beneficial for all stakeholders, the credit status and profit for our lenders profitability for our shareholders. And of course, you need to understand the risks as you walk into an acquisition. That's aided if you have knowledge of the asset, the organization, the subsurface, because of course, we deal in power and oil and gas and mining, subsurface is key, and also the markets you're selling into. And you need to have a view of the growth potential and upside for the acquisition. So, Ophir Energy was a success. This was followed, this, sorry, this followed our acquisition to control Meco Power, the move into Australia with McMahon, then the consolidation of our interest in Aceh. And then of course, back in 2006, we went offshore with the South Natuna Block PPSC. You will have seen some recent exploration drilling success and then in, the, in Block B and more to come. And then of course, the acquisition of the gold mine from Newmont. So we've been very active in acquisitions and we have a good track record. And we are continuing to look at opportunities. There are many in Southeast Asia as the large European and American oil and gas companies move out of Asia and back towards their home market. And also as they become more green and they exit oil and gas fields. So many opportunities that we are assessing. But we don't just buy. You will see at the bottom of this page some portfolio rationalization, where over the last three few years, we have focused into our three core businesses, oil and gas, copper, uh, copper mining, and group clean power. So doing that, we've sold non-core businesses. We've also upgraded our portfolio and sold mature assets. We've also diversified and reallocated capital away from Amman into oil and gas. And when we bought Ophir, they had a very different focus. I think I mentioned that many companies now are realizing that uh, big exploration is perhaps uh, a thing of the past. And so we have exited Ophir's deep water, expensive, high risk exploration licenses. Next slide, please, Boo. And at this point, I will hand over to my colleague, 
by Ronald to take you through our response to, to COVID-19 and for operational aspects of Metco Energy. Pa Ronald? Okay, thank you, Pak Tony. Selamat siang, Bapak-Bapak dan Ibu-Ibu. Uh, saya akan uh, memberikan uh, sedikit uh, background tentang uh, respons dari Metco tentang uh, related ke COVID-19 pandemik. Seperti kita ketahui bahwa uh, pandemik ini mempengaruhi semua uh, apa namanya uh, negara dan juga operasi bukan hanya perusahaan minyak tapi juga perusahaan uh, perusahaan yang lain. Nah untuk untuk uh, Medco sendiri kami uh, melakukan uh, respons dengan membentuk uh, tim task force khusus yang yang menangani uh, tentang uh, bagaimana memanage uh, uh, operasi kita dengan uh, mempertimbangkan protokol-protokol uh, dari COVID ini. Tujuannya kita adalah kita untuk melindungi keamanan dari uh, kesehatan dari pekerja kita dan juga keluarga keluarga mereka dan juga kita melindungi juga masyarakat di mana kita uh, uh, beroperasi dan uh, yang terakhir yang ketiga adalah kita mem, uh, mem, mem, per, uh, mem, mem, halo, di, halo, yang terakhir adalah kita mengusahakan supaya operasi kita tetap berjalan dengan tidak ada gangguan karena karena masalah ini nah apa yang telah kita lakukan yang telah kita lakukan adalah kita mau make sure bahwa segala akses dari apa eh, pekerja yang akan bekerja di daerah operasi kita itu mereka semua melakukan dengan eh, ada screening jadi screening itu kita lakukan untuk make sure bahwa uh, pekerja itu bekerja mereka semua adalah covid free dan itu kita lakukan dengan melakukan uh, PCR test atau swab test kemudian kita melakukan juga edukasi kita melakukan juga uh, uh, edukasi uh, sesuai dengan uh, uh, covid protokol dan implementasi dari protokol itu dengan sangat strict dan uh, juga kita untuk uh, perlindungan terhadap keluarga kita mempersiapkan juga saluran telepon maupun uh, informasi untuk uh, pemantauan atau perlu dukung uh, perlu untuk dukungan dari uh, karyawan maupun keluarganya. Nah itu yang kita lakukan dan sejauh ini uh, belum ada uh, operasi kita masih berjalan seperti uh, uh, normal dan tidak uh, mengang, uh, mengalami gangguan yang berarti. Untuk masyarakat yang kita uh, uh, di mana kita beroperasi sesuai dengan kita punya sustainability uh, program kita uh, bekerja sama untuk uh, pendidikan memberikan juga uh, uh, donasi untuk alat-alat kesehatan untuk membantu masyarakat sekitar sehingga mereka juga uh, dapat uh, berusaha dan mereka juga uh, mendapat uh, meningkatkan kapasiti dari uh, ekonomi mereka. Oke, okay, itu itu tentang uh, COVID. Next, next slide. Oke, okay. di slide ini saya um, akan uh, menunjukkan tentang uh, peningkatan produksi. Jadi dari kita kita lihat produksi kita dari tahun 2016 itu meningkat dari 66.000 kalau kita melihat bahwa 66.000 sampai di tahun 2019 kita melihat akan meningkat dari 66.000 sampai kita 115 itu yang proforma angka yang ditunjuk oleh Pak Tony sebelumnya itu sekitar 100 103 ya kalau kita lihat di situ di 2019 nah dari nah pertanyaannya bagaimana kita meningkatkan uh, uh, produksi dari 66.000 sampai kita hadiah atas 100.000 itu bisa kita lakukan dengan penambahan cadangan kalau kita melihat bahwa eh, penambahan cadangan kita dalam eh, lima tahun terakhir ini kita punya eh, reserve replacement ratio untuk tupi 
itu di atas 100 persen, di atas 108,6 persen. Dan juga rata-rata kita punya finding and development cost itu sekitar 12,5 dolar per BOE. Kita punya cadangan, kita punya cadangan usia cadangan kita untuk tupi itu sekitar 8 tahun. Jadi itu yang yang kita lakukan sehingga kita bisa meningkatkan produksi yang di atas 100 ribu barrel oil equivalent per day. Tadi Pak Tony sempat menyinggung tentang cadangan dan resources kita. Dapat kita lihat bahwa cadangan kita punya cadangan dan resources kita itu sekitar lebih dari satu triliun barrel oil equivalent per equivalent. Itu kira-kira tentang resources dan cadangan yang kita punya. Sekarang ini kita fokus adalah memonetisasi, memonetisasi sumber daya yang telah kita temukan uh, tahun ini uh, kita telah uh, drilling dua exploration well yang yang sudah kita uh, di Natuna yaitu Bronang dan uh, Kaci dan uh, dua-dua adalah Discovery Cas dan uh, akan rencana uh, ke depan kita untuk uh, uh, pengembangannya. Kita masih ada juga lagi dua exploration well yang akan kita drill di Natuna dan kita harapkan bahwa dengan ada penemuan keempat ini kita bisa ada new development untuk untuk mengganti reserve yang telah terproduksi. Oke, okay. uh, next. Salah satu uh, Meko ini adalah perusahaan di mana uh, yang beroperasi di Indonesia di mana kita beroperasi bukan hanya di onshore tapi juga di offshore. Jadi mungkin kalau uh, Bapak-bapak dan Ibu lihat bahwa tidak um, tidak terlalu banyak ya perusahaan di Indonesia yang uh, beroperasi baik di onshore, uh, onshore maupun offshore. Dan Meko sendiri di Indonesia sebagai main for uh, kita punya for operations di Indonesia. kita mengoperasikan sekitar 15 PSC. Dari 11 dari 15 PSC itu 14 PSC eh 11 PSC sudah berproduksi dan 4 PSC masih dalam tahap eksplorasi. Dalam eh, sejak eh, 5 tahun yang lalu kita mempunyai eh, kemampuan kita telah menunjukkan kemampuan kita bahwa kita dapat eh, eh, melakukan proyek-proyek yang cukup kompleks. Mungkin yang saya tunjukkan di sini adalah yang tra- yang 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 kita lakukan uh, tahun ini adalah uh, proyek di uh, Thailand. Jadi aset kita di Thailand namanya Bua Luang, lokasinya di Gulf of Thailand. Jadi uh, kita telah melakukan uh, proyek pengembangan fase 4 yang dimulai di 2018 oleh uh, operator sebelumnya, Ovir. dan kita lanjutkan dan sudah selesai uh, di tahun 2000 Desember 2019 dengan pemasangan uh, platform baru dan juga uh, drilling dan walk, drilling 12 wells dan walkover sehingga uh, produksi dapat meningkat sekitar di atas 10.000 barrel oil per day. Ini adalah oil asset. Kemudian uh, juga uh, sekitar 2 bulan 1,5 bulan yang lalu Uh, kita telah uh, selesai dengan proyek di, di Jawa Timur yaitu proyek Meliwis uh, itu uh, proyek itu telah uh, selesai dan uh, gas sudah dialirkan untuk uh, pembeli di Jawa Timur. Kemudian next next slide. Kemudian uh, proyek yang lain yang kita per, yang saya perlu highlight juga di sini adalah proyek di Aceh. Jadi ini proyek blok A yang yang sudah selesai dan uh, telah berproduksi sejak 2018. Ini adalah proyek yang uh, sangat kompleks di mana kita mengoperasikan gas uh, dari uh, reservoir yang uh, high pressure, high temperature dan juga uh, high CO2 dan high uh, H2S. Jadi high sulfur dan uh, Sejauh ini 
kita dapat mengoperasi eh, kita dapat mendeliver project uh, on target dan uh, ter- mengoperasikan uh, uh, plan itu dengan dengan aman. Kemudian uh, proyek berikutnya adalah uh, proyek uh, Senoro Oily Block di Sulawesi. Nah ini adalah satu uh, salah satu contoh uh, di mana uh, Medco mempunyai kemampuan untuk mengembangkan proyek di daerah yang uh, sangat remote di uh, Sulawesi, di mana kita mempunyai uh, kita bekerja sama dengan Pertamina dan uh, uh, Korean dan uh, Japanese partner. untuk uh, mengembangkan proyek ini dan uh, membuat satu integrated plan to get, uh, bersama-sama untuk uh, menjual gas ini uh, de- dengan membangun juga uh, LNG plan di uh, Donggi. Jadi uh, proyek ini sudah, ber- sudah sudah selesai di 2015 dan sekarang masih uh, berproduksi uh, dan uh, Kita sedang melihat untuk uh, perkembangan selanjutnya untuk fase 2 karena uh, masih ada sumber daya tambahan, sekitar reserve gas tambahan yang uh, di atas 2 TCF untuk uh, perlu di, dikembangkan untuk uh, fase kedua. Ini aja uh, dari saya uh, dan saya kembalikan kepada Pak uh, Tony. Next. Pak Tony. Silakan. Okay, back. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Ronald. Uh, I am conscious of time and we'll leave time for Q&A. Uh, so I will finish. We will finish on this slide, uh, which shows what to expect from Metco over the next one, two years. Of course, all of this is said with the backdrop of what people are calling the new normal. and COVID-19, where we, of course, need to prioritize the health and safety of our employees and contractors and the communities where we operate, but also minimizing disruption to business. With that, this is perhaps an usual period. So our focus in this, uh, uncertain time is to forward plan, manage cash, of course. Cash is king at this point. And that means very disciplined capital investment. When prices are uncertain and the future outlook is uncertain, the recovery back away from new normal, hopefully to a future normal, is unclear. We are being very disciplined in our capital investments. You will see that we are still investing very clearly, but disciplined and only the most profitable. We're focusing for on following our fear on operating and procurement synergies, and we will maintain our cash costs below $10 a barrel. So we are being disciplined in capital investment, but you will have seen over the last couple of months, we put in place the Melowis development in Rial, We are moving forward the development of the new gas-fired IPP in Bali and Sumbawa. We won PLN tenders in Bali and then on Sumbawa for the new smelter, we're putting in solar PV facilities. And then of course, uh, phase seven on the mine has reached productive ore, but there is more overburden still to remove. So we will complete that development. You also saw, I think, a release on uh, Pass Biru, which we, the POD was approved recently. And then we are completing those developments, which are for new growth. We are then appraising resources, a one billion resource. So we, are, we develop and move them to reserves. So particularly on Block B, we had two Two recent good discoveries in Bronang and Kachi, two wells drilled there recently with two further explorations, exploration wells being drilled. In EGEN, EGEN is a new geothermal license we are developing with our partners. 
So we have made one steam discovery already with an exploration well, and then we have moved to a new well, hoping to understand the size of the new geothermal development that will take place through this exploration drilling. So it's an unusual time. We're focusing on growth, but also stability. The 250 million a year that we make from fixed price take or pay gas contracts offers us a foundation. Uh, a fa that and our hedging program offers us a firm foundation. Regardless of what happens to commodity prices, the floor for us is fixed. And from that floor, we can build spending capital on growth. Some news you will hear soon are regards our strategic alliance for Mexico Power to fund new growth, which we have been working on for almost a year now. And then, of course, I'm a, clearly that's under review because, of the, as I say, this new normal environment we're operating in and whether capital, we would secure the right uh, market environment for IPO, still under review. And then finally, right, the rights issue use of proceeds is general corporate purpose, and we expect to execute that in early to mid September. I think with that, um, with that, I will stop. The material here is all available on our website. Our website has a lot of for investors. We haven't covered here ability and a slide, at least one slide on each of our assets. Those together with what we've presented today are all available on our website for public review. With that, I'll hand back and over to Q&A. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sir. Terima kasih kepada Bapak Anthony dan Bapak Ronald atas pemaparan yang telah diberikan. Saat ini kita akan memasuki sesi tanya jawab yang akan dipandu oleh Ibu Mirta. Kepada Ibu Mirta, kami persilahkan. Oke, okay, terima kasih Bu Ayuni. Uh, terima kasih Bapak dan Ibu sekalian atas pertanyaan yang sudah disampaikan ke kami. Saya coba combine beberapa pertanyaan karena um, beberapa kami lihat cukup similar. Uh, pertanyaan pertama, uh, First question, uh, this is relates on Marcella, uh, sh uh, relating to Shell's plan on divestment of Marcella. Will Medco be interested uh, to participate uh, in this block? Maybe Parona and Tony can answer that. Tony, you want to, you want to answer? Sure, oh, thank you, Parona. I think uh, in the presentation material on slide, let me see. Slide six on portfolio management. You will see we have been very active in our portfolio management, acquiring and also selling assets over the past four or five years. Our criteria for assessing new opportunities are very clear. Improve credit status and profitability and knowledge of the, the risks that you're walking into and how to manage them and the growth potential upside. Clearly, Marcella would have lots of growth potential and upside, but I think as Pak Hilmi has talked in the press, it's probably not the right asset for us at this time. We will, of course, continue to assess opportunities. Uh, we are not currently assessing Marcella. Uh, should it be offered, of course, we would assess it and our criteria uh, uh, in front of you and very transparent. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is around company strategy. What is company strategy uh, to compensate or corresponds to instability and fluctuation of commodity price and weaker rupiah? Uh, saya jawab dalam bahasa Indonesia aja dulu ya. Jadi saya pikir uh, kita ini di bisnis di mana komoditi price kita ini kan uh, uh, cukup fluktuasi. 
Jadi ya mungkin seperti telah disebut, disebutkan di, uh, oleh Pak Hilmi, yang, yang perlu kita lakukan adalah kita memastikan sure bahwa kita itu uh, menjadi cost leader. Makanya kita lihat bahwa efisiensi itu sangat penting ya. Yang tadi dipresentasikan oleh Pak Tony bahwa kita sudah berhasil menurunkan uh, kita punya cash cost dari sekitar 15 sampai sekarang sekitar 10 dolar per BOE. Dan itu saya pikir adalah key untuk kita uh, uh, apa bisa ber, uh, berada di bisnis ini sehingga uh, kita uh, bisa uh, uh, mem, apa, mengantisipasi kalau ada perubahan uh, harga minyak yang cukup perubahan uh, harga komoditi yang cukup signifikan. Maybe I, I could add, perhaps by Ronald. Yeah. Maybe I could add just a couple of points for, as by Ronald said, we have to be a cost leader. We're in a commodity price environment, so we cannot control the price. You can control your cost. So you must be low cost with a focus on ESG, of course. But you can prepare you can prepare for hard times too by hedging. So you'll see our hedging focus. 15% of our production is hedged. Clearly the price you hedge varies, but 15% of our production this year is hedged be between uh, 40 and $55 a barrel. On top of that, in Indonesia, the focus on, on domestic fixed price gas with take pay protection internationally, the gas fixed, fixed price is a, a clear support to, to us in difficult times. And with regard to weak rupiah, um, I would say that you know, our functional currency is dollars and our revenue is in dollars. Clearly we have rupiah expenditure, but the dollar is weakening now. The, the US are printing a lot of money. So actually, I, I don't know whether the weak rupiah is, will be a reality for very long. You know, the dollar is the one that I think the world is watching as to whether that will weaken. But clearly, we take hedging strategies on commodity and also FX and also interest rates in order to manage our risk and, in, and ensure that we can continue to invest for growth. Tony, maybe I, I add also the one that you mentioned about the gas price. Uh, jadi di gas price kita yang 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 di dalam negeri yang kita jual pada PLN, PGN uh, maupun pada uh, power plant lokal itu semua adalah uh, fixed price. Jadi tidak terpengaruh dengan uh, fluktuasi harga komoditi. Yeah. Oke, okay, terima kasih Pak Tony Pak Ronald. Untuk pertanyaan berikutnya, next question, Pak. This is on strategy macro on rights issue. What is the schedule for the rights issue, pricing, and use of proceeds? Pak Tony. Yeah. Pak Tony, maybe you can respond on this, please. So, Hello, I will take that, Boo. Hopefully the signal is good. Uh, it's a little little delay, but uh, the rights issue timing, we are expecting the OJK effective statement, uh, effective statement shortly, which will enable us to move ahead with the rights issue. Um, shareholders approved the maximum number of shares in our EGMS in May. Uh, and the rules in Indonesia is that the OJK will approve them. The pricing and structure will be public. We have indicated that we will raise between 100 and 150 million US dollars. The details will be published shortly following OJK approval. And with that approval, we'd move forward with the rights in early to mid-September. Use of proceeds. I think as we mentioned before, it will be general corporate purposes, working capital. Uh, we do not have significant debt maturities in the near term. 
until 2025. So the use of proceeds can fund growth, can fund acquisitions, general corporate purposes. Okay, uh, thank you, Pat uh, Next question, this is around, uh, yeah. Next question is around, um, what is Medco Energy anticipation in regards to development of renewables and electric vehicles? I don't know if you want to yeah. cover that. Saya pikir ini kita, apa, seperti tadi Pak Tony bilang, uh, oil and gas kan uh, masih menjadi backbone ya sekarang. <laughs> Tapi at the same time kita mulai growing juga kita punya bisnis untuk uh, dalam bidang power ya true Medco Power dan sejauh ini kita melihat bahwa Medco Power ini uh, mulai berkembang yang tadi Pak Tony sempat uh, presentasikan juga eh, sempat uh, di salah satu slide-nya itu tentang PV di Bali dan uh, uh, Sumbawa dan juga uh, Medco Power sekarang sedang uh, drilling exploration well di Ijen untuk geothermal di Ijen. Jadi itu part dari uh, effort yang kita lakukan untuk uh, uh, renewable untuk uh, diversifikasi bisnis kita. Jadi tidak terga eh, kita tidak tergantung uh, uh, 100 per, eh, apa 80 persen di uh, oil and gas. Terima kasih Pak yeah. Bu Ayuning mungkin saya mau cek waktu, Bu. Iya, yeah, Bu. Okay. Maybe ya. Yeah. Iya, yeah. iya yeah, masih bisa mungkin untuk satu pertanyaan bisa aja bu yang short. I'll point out. Ya, yeah, go ahead Pak Tony. Di motong balik di file. On to comment on the electric vehicles application of the world. Great, copper. Copper is the best of electricity. There is no substitute for copper. Hence our focus on aman mineral and copper mining. Okay, thank you, Pak. Um, one last question, yeah, Ibu. Uh, maybe I will do this in Bahasa. Uh, dengan rendahnya harga minyak, migas, dan mahalnya biaya eksplorasi produksi, apakah Medco akan mempertahankan tingkat produksi dan cadangan migas? Mungkin Pak Ronald bisa respon. Okay. Saya pikir yang tadi yang mas tentang harga minyak dan harga minyak kita udah ini ya, udah udah cover. Jadi mungkin saya tambahkan sedikit yang tentang eksplorasi. Jadi tadi juga di salah satu slide presentasi kan di slide presentasi yang uh, oleh Pak Tony yang uh, itu sudah disebutkan bahwa Uh, Medco kita strateginya itu adalah uh, low risk exploration. Jadi uh, kita punya 15 uh, PSC, uh, 11 uh, produksi yang tadi saya sebutkan juga, 4 masih exploration dan lokasinya itu uh, dekat dengan existing kita the existing infrastructure, existing kita punya producing fields. Makanya sekarang ini uh, Strategi kita adalah kita melakukan eksplorasi di daerah-daerah yang dekat dengan dengan uh, infrastruktur kita. Tujuannya apa? Supaya uh, time to market itu bisa cepat. Jadi uh, seperti tahun ini yang tadi disebutkan bahwa kita ada empat exploration well yang kita drill di Natuna. Dan Natuna di Natuna di, di dalam dekat in, infrastruktur kita. Jadi uh, kalau kita kembangkan itu, kita bisa kembangkan uh, dengan tie-in ke existing facilities. Salah satu yang kita sudah lakukan terakhir ini adalah Meliwis. Ya. Meliwis yang di East Java. Meliwis itu uh, dikembangkan kurang, kurang sekitar hampir tiga tahun. Kurang dari tiga tahun. Kita sudah uh, sejak ditemukan, sudah uh, first guess. Jadi... Uh, Itulah keuntungannya kalau kita melakukan eksplorasi di daerah-daerah di dekat sama infrastruktur kita. Oke, terima kasih Pak Ronald atas penjelasannya. Mungkin mengingat waktu Bu Ayuning, saya ya, kembali. Betul. Terima kasih. Baik. Terima kasih banyak Ibu Mirta, Bapak Antoni, dan Bapak Ronald.
Baik hadirin yang kami hormati, dengan demikian usai sudah paparan publik yang disampaikan oleh PT Medco Energi Internasional Tbk. Atas nama penyelenggara, kami mengucapkan terima kasih sekali lagi pada Bapak Ibu Manajemen PT Medco Energi Internasional Tbk dan seluruh hadirin yang hadir pada siang hari ini. Sampai jumpa pada acara Public Expose Live berikutnya. Maju terus Pasar Modal Indonesia. <tuh>